Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And here we're taking a look at the LG G7 versus the G6. Now, one of the reasons why we're taking a look at this comparison is because the evolution between G devices has been kind of rocky. Those kinds of changes are not happening anymore in the G7, as its influences are pretty clear. It comes from the G6 with a little bit of the V30 injected in. Really, the main changes when it comes to design happen to be in the button layouts. The fingerprint reader on the back is still in a good place, but it is no longer also a power button as the power button has been shifted over to the side. LG claims that this is for better convenience so you don't have to reach around the phone to actually wake the phone anymore. But another button has sprouted out of the other side of the phone and that is the AI key. Google Assistant is the AI of choice for the G7, as it was with the G6. However, there's a new way of interacting with Google Assistant by pressing this button. You can press the button to make it do the same thing that would happen if you were to hold the home soft key, but then you can also hold the button so that you can talk to Google Assistant like a walkie-talkie. This doesn't sound like much, but it is a very different way of making sure that Google Assistant knows you have stopped talking because it's not trying to auto-detect for your voice anymore. So then you have the screen, and it is still that slightly taller than wider display, but it's not just 18 by 9 aspect ratio now, it is specifically 19.5 by 9. So what you have is a little bit more display up at the top, where the notch is basically just in the middle housing the phone speaker and the front facing camera. That notch is something you can customize by either turning it off or adding some extra color to it, but overall the handling because of the size of these screens is pretty similar between these two devices. One thing that we do miss is an actual second screen. This notch is called the new second screen, but it doesn't provide any of the features that were in the second screens of the V10 and the V20 before it. Thankfully though, no matter which of these two devices you might be rocking, you do still get the always on display still. One change from the G6 to the G7 is a more powerful display in terms of brightness. The IPS LCD display can get up to 1000 nits either automatically in broad daylight or via a quick button press in the quick toggles. So underneath the surface, performance boosts are pretty much par for the course from one year to the other, and the Snapdragon 821 of the LG G6 gets that good bump up to the 845 in the LG G7. Now the 821 feels like a long time ago, so that upgrade might just be what you're looking for and it might be enough to make you upgrade your G6. But you also get up to 6GB of RAM and up to 128GB of onboard storage in the G7 depending on the version you get. One hit that G7 users will feel is a 3000 mAh battery compared to 3300 that you used to get in the G6, but lowering the capacity of that battery unit might have had some auxiliary benefits. Enter the sound experience. The LG G6 had a respectable bottom firing speaker, but that same speaker returns in the G7 with a few very significant tweaks. Mainly that the space in the back, between the back cover and whatever it is protecting, is used as the resonance chamber now. That basically means that when you have audio playing at a loud volume, the entire back vibrates and you can lay that down on a hard surface to make it resonate even better. This is called Boombox Sound, and the demos that we saw pitting the G6 versus the G7 really show that there's no competition. The G7, when put onto a hollow container like a wooden or a cardboard box, made that entire container be the amplifier. It's really awesome to see and definitely better than putting any other phone in something like a glass mug. Still, the quad DAC returns in the headphone jack, which also returns, of course, and you also get some surround sound tweaking, so if you do have a good pair of headphones, this is still a great place to keep them in the LG camp. And to keep those good times rolling, we can talk about the cameras now. LG made one great enhancement from the G6 to the G7 that might actually be one of the main points for your upgrade, and that is the front-facing camera. The front-facing camera now does great photos comparatively to the 5 megapixel shooters of the last two iterations. This 8 megapixel shooter just has better sharpness and does a much better job of providing selfies for those people who were really thinking it was lacking in LG phones. The main camera experience is pretty similar between the two as you still get a wide angle lens, but the wide angle lens of the G7 is a little bit more narrow now. It's at 107 degrees, which eliminates some of the distortion at the expense of just a little bit of the wide view. You still get plenty of space to play around with though, and both of the lenses on the G7 are now 16 megapixels, so they both provide very similar quality. There's also a proper portrait mode now as well, which does a pretty good job, and because one of the lenses is a wide-angle lens, you don't have to step back because the lens is trying to zoom into the subject. It keeps the same focal length as the regular lens. 
And finally, a couple of the last features in the G7 are things we really want to compare in it compared to the G6. Low light photography is the first of them. The super bright camera mode actually binds four pixels together so that the 16 megapixel photos you usually get become four megapixel photos so that it can flood in more light. And finally, AI gets injected into the G series, and it's similar to the one you might have seen in the LG V30s. The AI in the G7 basically means that there are thousands of terms that have been put into the camera software, and it is trying to figure out what subject you are pointing the camera at. Once it figures that out, it will change the settings so that you get a better photo overall. For example, if you take a picture of a plant or of a tree, then the saturation will get bumped up, and in the case of greenery, the greens are going to be more prevalent. We're excited to put these two phones up against each other, but this is just a quick look at them, and really just a way for us to say that if you are still using an LG G6, well, there are a few features that we've outlined in this video that might already convince you to upgrade. Sure, the battery life might take a little bit of a hit, but the front-facing camera is already in and of itself a great enhancement that we think a lot of people will be clamoring for if they're still using older LG devices. Boombox sound and upgraded specs in general are also reasons why you might want to make the jump. So LG G6 users, let us know what you think and if you plan on updating to the G7 and let us know why in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to check out all of our other content on the LG G7 here at androidauthority.com and remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell because we are your source for all things Android.